For our first video, we're going to talk about dividing polynomials. So a polynomial is when you add several terms and you make an expression. Uh, so standard form is important for our polynomial. So standard form means you write your polynomial with your exponents in descending order. So highest exponents come first, and that's important because in order to do our division in a few minutes, you have to make sure that your polynomials are first in standard form. So for the first example, we got 4x cubed plus 2x to the fifth minus x plus 7 minus 3x squared. So look for the biggest exponent. In this case, our biggest exponent is the 5. So that 2x to the fifth has to come first when I'm writing this in standard form. So we're going to have the 2x to the 5th first. Then when you leave the 5, look for the next highest number, which is going to be our 3 over here. So then my next term is a positive 4x cubed. Okay, then I've got a 2, so then that's a minus 3x squared. Right, and then I have this variable and a number, right? Well, this variable is x to the first power, and then I don't even have an x. That's technically x to the 0 power right because anything to the zero power is one so i'm going to put the minus x first and then the plus seven your constant always comes last when you're writing in standard form right so i got a five three two one and then no x okay so for the second one my highest exponent looks like this three x cubed but in front of the x cubed i have a minus sign that minus has to stay with the x cubed that's really a negative x cubed right then after the three i've got a two so that's a positive 7x squared. Then I have x to the first power. And then I have no x, my constant, which is a minus 8. So just pay attention to your signs. Make sure you keep your signs with each term. All right, then we also have to review long division before we can start dividing our polynomials. So if I wanted to do 248 divided by 3, if I want to set it up, I'm going to put 248 underneath my division bar. And then on the outside, I put a 3. Now, this is not a square root. This is a division bar because we're doing division, right? And hopefully you remember how to do this or this will jog your memory. But you start with the 3 on the outside. And you say, okay, how many times does 3 go into the first number? 2. Well, it doesn't. So then I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to say, how many times does 3 go into 24? And it goes into 24 eight, uh, eight times. So I'm going to put the 8 on top, and I'm going to put it on top of the 4, because that's how I had to, how far over I had to go before 3 went into it. Right? Then I'm going to do 8 times 3, which is 24, and we subtract. Well, 24 minus 24 is 0, and then I bring down the next number. All right? 3 goes into 8 2 times, and then 2 times 3 is 6, and we subtract, and we get a 2. 3 doesn't go into 2. So I could keep going, right? Put a decimal, put some zeros, and keep going, 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 but I don't have to. I can write my answer as 82, and then I call this 2 down here your remainder. All right, so I can say that it's 82 with a remainder of 2, or I can put that 2 over the 3. So I can say that this is 82 and 2 thirds. All right, then if I do it again for the 348 divided by 3. All right, 3 goes into 3 one time. All right, 1 times 3 is 3. If I subtract, I get a 0, and then I bring down the next one. 3 goes into 4 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract, I get a 1, bring down the next one. And then 3 goes into 18 six times. Well, six times three is 18, and if I subtract, I get zero. So now for this one, I have a remainder of zero, or no remainder, because it's just zero. So that means my answer, 348 divided by three, is 116 even. Now, because I have no remainder, nothing left over, that tells me that three goes into 348 evenly, which means three is what we call a factor of 348 because it goes in there evenly all right now when we add in our polynomials we're going to end up doing the exact same thing it's going to look a little weird because we got x's in there right but i have this polynomial here divided by this polynomial all right first thing we got to do check and make sure it's in standard form i have a three a two 
a 1, and then my constant. So that one's good. And then I have my x to the first and constant. So both of those are in standard form. So I'm going to set it up the same way we did long division up here. The x plus 2 goes on the outside, because that's what I'm dividing by. And on the inside, I put my polynomial. 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 5. Right? Just like it's written. Okay, now, this is a little different, because I'm not going to work with the entire x plus 2. Instead, I'm going to work with just the x part when it comes to what I write on top, right? Not the x plus 2. Okay, so just like we did up here, I said, okay, how many times does 3 go into the 24? Right, so I'm going to say, how many times does x go into the 3x cubed? Start with what's first. So x times 2 or 3x squared is going to give me 3x cubed. So that 3x squared is what I put up top, right? Because x times 3x squared gives me the 3x cubed. Right? Then I'm going to take whatever I write up top here and multiply it by the whole thing. So the first part, I only use x. The second part, I used all of it, x plus 2. Just like we did here, right? We said, you know, 3 goes into 3 one time, so I did 1 times 3 to get the number in the next line. So here, 3x squared times x gives me 3x cubed. 3x squared times 2 gives me a 6x squared. Draw my line, and just like before, I subtract. So 3x cubed minus 3x cubed is going to cancel, and it should cancel every time we do this. Then I have 2x squared minus 6x squared. Well, 2 minus 6 is negative 4, so I have negative 4x squared, and then I bring down the minus x, right? Just like we did up here, bring down the next number. And then I do it again. So I'm working with just the x, and I want to know what I multiply by x to get to a negative 4x squared. That's going to be a negative 4x. All right? Then I take whatever I write up here and I multiply it by the whole part over here. So negative 4x times x is a negative 4x squared. Negative 4x times 2 is a negative 8x. Draw my line and we subtract. Negative 4x minus negative 4x, right? Minus a negative becomes a plus. So negative 4x squared plus 4x squared is 0. It cancels. Negative x minus negative 8x. So that double negative there becomes a plus. So negative x plus 8x is a 7x. And then I bring down the plus 5. Okay, and we do it one more time. x to get to 7x, I have to multiply it by 7. So I'm going to put a plus 7 up here. All right, so then x times 7 is 7x. 2 times 7 is 14. 7x minus 7x cancels. 5 minus 14 is a negative 9. All right, x does not go into a negative 9 because there is no x there. So that means that this leftover piece down here is my remainder. Alright, so then my answer is what I have up top here plus my remainder. So I have 3x squared minus 4x plus 7, right? And then I'm going to add in my remainder, right? So now this one, because it's a negative, right, I'm going to put minus because it's not a positive. And just like we did here, I put the 2 over what I divided by. I'm going to put 9 over what I divided by. And that's my answer to that first problem. All right, so it's a lot of work. We'll learn a shortcut in just a minute, but polynomial division works every single time, or our long division works every single time. Okay, then one more. This is another way of writing division, right? Top divided by bottom, so it's the same thing. First thing we got to do is check to see that they're in standard form, and the first one, right off the bat, isn't in standard form, okay? Because this x cubed has to come first. So if I write it in standard form, it's going to be x cubed, then my 3x, then the minus 4. All right. So then I'm going to put the bottom part on the outside. And then I'm going to put this guy on the inside. All right. So I start with the x squared that's on the outside here. That's what I'm working with to get the top. So x squared 
times something has to give me x cubed. So x squared times x gives me x cubed, right? Well, then I have to take whatever I write on top times this whole piece. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times a negative x is a negative x squared. And we'll come back to that in a second. And then x times 1 is x, all right? And then I go to subtract. Well, x cubed minus x cubed cancels. But then I have a 3x minus a negative x squared. x and x squared can't go together. I cannot combine those, right? This 3x has to go with the x over here. All right, so make sure you pay attention. Don't combine, or you can't combine terms that aren't like terms. So really, this is just a negative negative x squared, which is a positive x squared on the bottom. It's like a 0 minus negative x squared because I don't have anything to combine with it. But then my 3x can subtract the x. So 3x minus x is 2x and then we'll bring down the minus 4. So sometimes it gets a little wonky. If you wanted to, because I don't have an x squared here, I could have written that x squared on the outside kind of by itself. That way the x would have gone directly under the 3x and it would have looked a little nicer. Doesn't matter how you do it as long as you pay attention and make sure that you only combine x's with x's and x squared with x squared. Okay? Now, x squared times something has to give me x squared. Well, since it's the same thing, that means I can multiply it by 1. So I can put a plus 1 up there. Then I have 1 times x squared, 1 times negative x, and 1 times 1. x squared minus x squared cancels. And then everything lines up pretty in this round. So I have 2x minus negative x, or plus x, which is a 3x, negative 4 minus 1, negative 5. Right, then I'm looking to get x squared into x, but since x to the first power is smaller than x to the second power, it doesn't go into that, so this leftover part here, that's our remainder. Right, so my answer is what I have on top, so that's an x plus 1, and then I'm going to add my remainder. So I'm going to say plus my remainder over what I divided by, which is that x squared minus x plus 1. So that looks a little different because it didn't line up just right, but same idea. Your answer plus your remainder over what you divided by. Okay, so again, long division works every single time, but it is a longer way of doing the problems. Long division. So we do have one that's a little shorter. It's actually a lot shorter. So we have synthetic division. All right, but synthetic division we're only going to use when we have x to the first power, and it's got to be 1x to the first power, right? And what I mean by that is when you divide, it's got to be 1x to the first power plus a number, whatever number you want that to be, or minus a number. So notice here, for all three of our examples, it's just 1x to the first power minus 3, right? So that example that we did here, the first one I can do synthetic division for. The second one we cannot because I'm dividing by an x squared there. So you got to make sure that it's just 1x to the first power and what you're dividing by. All right, then you're going to set it up the same every single time you do this. All right, so we're going to have a box. All right, in that box, you're going to put your root, all right, which we're not going to really get into, but it's the opposite sign of what you're dividing by. So here I'm dividing by x minus 3, so I'm going to put a positive 3 in the box. All right, for this one, when I set up my box, I'm going to put a negative 2. All right, so you put the opposite sign of whatever number you're dividing by in the box. And then I'm going to write out my coefficients. Okay, so before you write out your coefficients, double check, make sure it's in standard form. So for the first one, I have x to the second, x to the first, no x. So this one's in standard form. Your coefficient is the number that's in front of the x's. So for this one, I have a 2 in front of the x squared. I have a negative 5 in front of the x and a negative 3 for my constant. So those are my coefficients. And every single time you do this, you're going to block off the last one. Draw a little T in there. Bring down the first one every single time. Right? So if I set this one up, uh, actually we'll come back to that one in a second. All right. Then if I move up, I don't know where I write this, we'll write it down here. If I move up 
for a synthetic division, I multiply, right? And then when I move down, we add. So move up, you multiply, down, you add. So if I want to start down here and move up to here, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to do 2 times 3, which is 6. Then I'm going to move down by adding. Negative 5 plus 6 is a 1. All right, then I'm going to move up by multiplying. 1 times 3 is 3. And then I'm going to move down by adding. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Okay, the reason that we block off this last little piece down here is because anything right here is going to be our remainder. So we're blocking off a spot to keep our remainder. So in this case, there's no remainder, right, which means that this one works out evenly. Okay, x minus 3 is a factor of 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. All right, then we write our answer. Okay, so there's two ways of looking at your answer. The number before the remainder is always going to be the constant. And then you're going to count up. So I'm going to have a constant and then x to the first power, x to the second, x to the third, however far you need to go. Or if you look at your original problem, I started with an x squared, but I took out an x because I divided by x. So that means my first number here has to start with the x. All right, so my answer is 2x plus a constant of 1. All right, for number two, before I can set it up, we gotta check to make sure it's in standard form. So this one, uh, I got x cubed, then I have x to the first and no x. So it's in standard form, but I'm skipping an x, right? Because I have x to the third power, right? And then I would have x to the second, then x, and then my constant, my number, right? But I'm missing this x squared in there. All right, when I go to write my coefficients, you have to account for every single one so that you don't skip anything, you don't miss it, All right? So that means that if I don't have an x squared, I'm going to use a placeholder of 0, All right? So I'm going to start with the beginning. So in front of my x cubed, I have a 3. In front of my x squared, because I don't have it, we're going to put in a 0, my placeholder. That's where my x squared would have been if I had one. Right, then in front of the x, I have a negative 5, and then my constant of 4. Okay, so with synthetic division, make sure you use a placeholder if you skip anything going down. All right, block off the last one, bring down the first one. All right, so then I'm going to do 3 times negative 2, multiply going up, add going down. 0 plus negative 6 is 0 minus 6, that's negative 6. Multiply, negative 6 times negative 2 is a positive 12. Add, negative 5 plus 12 is going to be a positive 7. And then multiply, 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. And then add, 4 plus negative 14 is negative 10. So this negative 10 here is my remainder. All right, and then I'm going to count up. So I have my constant then I have an x, then I have an x squared. So my first term is going to be a 3x squared minus 6x plus 7, and then I'm going to add my remainder. So this is just like long division with your remainder. Because it's a negative, I'm going to put a minus there, and then I have 10 over whatever I divided by originally. So 10 over x plus 2. All right, and then for our last one, Okay, I know I'm going to put a negative 1 in the box because it's going to be opposite. I'm going to put a negative 1 in there. But I have to double check that I have standard form for my polynomial. So for this one, I have x to the fourth, then no x, and then x to the first. So these two are backwards. So really, I need to do 4x to the fourth plus 3x plus 1. But then notice, I went from 4 to 1. So for this one, I'm missing x cubed and x squared. So I'm going to have to have two placeholders in there. So my coefficient for x to the fourth is a 4. Then I, I don't have x cubed, so that's a 0. I don't have x squared, so that's a 0. And then I have a 3 and a 1. Block off the last one. Bring down the first one. 4 times negative 1, negative 4. 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. 
4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 3 plus negative 4, negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. And then 1 plus 1, 2. Well, this 2 is my remainder. And then we count up. So I have constant x, x squared, x cubed. So my answer is going to start with a 4x cubed. Then I have a negative 4 x squared, positive 4, x, and then a negative 1 by itself. And then I'm going to add my remainder over what I divided by, x plus 1. All right, so you got long division, which you can use every single time. And then synthetic division, you can use as long as you have a 1x to the first power. So an x that's by itself out front of what you're dividing by.